not, you know, give you, please jot them down now. So you're going to see a piece of paper every single Sabbath, okay? You jot them, those names down, okay? Put it in the basket, okay? Offering basket. Then we collect them, we continue to pray. And we have a speaker coming from uh, uh, Richardson Church. You know, he's, he's our neighbor. He uh, decided he uh, you know is willing to come and spend ten days with us. Okay. So uh, please you know uh, help us okay, to bring the so bring you know harvest. Okay, that's all right. Great. Uh, last time when I was here, all the ladies are gone. So uh, you know, all the ladies are back now. So I'm gonna have a little you know, snapshot of what we have done uh, so far. The first question I posted was. How possible is it that Jesus made a wrong decision? Is that possible or not? No? Okay, so let's see what kind of decision he made. Okay? You know, when here, you know, you see the red line over there. One above, we call it Galilee. That's where the Jew used to live. And the, another line, you know, white line. And below that, in the middle, we call it Samaria. Now, below the white line, we call it Judea. Right here in this area, you know, the Jews were living in this area and over here because they didn't like each other. What they did was they, if they want to travel from Jerusalem to Nazareth, what they did was they crossed the River Jordan, go around here, and then cross the River Jordan again to get to the you know uh, northern part of, of Palestine. Okay. They never went through Samaria. Because they are like enemies. They hate each other. But Jesus decided to go to where? Samaria. Okay? So it's, it, was, it was a wrong journey. Okay? You will not do that. If you're, you know, if, you're Samaria, if you're a Jewish man, you do not want to take a risk okay, of going through Samaria. Because you know, uh, uh, 9 out of 10, you'll be you know, assassinated or you'll, you'll be killed. But Jesus decided to go through there to meet a woman. Okay? Alright, next one is going to a wrong town. You know, he decided to go to a, 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 a town called Sychar. Okay? And, and the wrong town. Uh, because the Sychar was known as a border town uh, between blessing and curse. There are two mountains, one on the left and one on the right. One on the right called Evil. You know, that's where the six of tribes stood and then God pronounced blessings. Another mountain on the left hand side, they call it Grissom. And, and there's another six tribes that standing there and God curse, uh, God uh, pronounced curse. So in the right in the middle. And also this town is known, because, well known because two sons of Jacob went there, killed every single man of the town. Long history. Okay. So it was a wrong town for Jewish men to visit. But Jesus decided to go there because there's a woman he had to meet. Okay. Then third, this one was see here. What kind of woman did she? She didn't meet a nice woman. She didn't meet a woman of reputation. Yes, not a good reputation, but bad reputation. What kind of woman was she about? To, uh, what he was about to meet a woman who married five times, four times, yeah, five times. And the husband that he had, she had, is not her husband. Okay. In those days, you know, man is the one who are allowed to switch, you know, wives or to have a multiple wives around. Not the woman having many wives, husbands. But she was a, such a such a wicked and immoral woman, you know, changing her husband five times. Okay, and you know what? <laughs> By this time, he's. He should have been, she should have been stoned to death. But somehow she survived. Okay? And, and the husband she had at the time wasn't her husband at all. Could be someone else's husband. You know? So she was an immoral woman. And Jesus, Jesus decided to meet her. Would you do that if you were Jesus? That's a wrong woman. Wrong journey, wrong town, wrong woman. Is that right decision to make? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Jesus decided to go there and meet that woman. Because there is a something that no one was able to see but Jesus. Okay, 
we got to talk about that today. This is my second presentation on this woman. There are two more coming. I want you to keep coming, you know, uh, and spend some time with me uh, studying about how Jesus dealt with, with the immoral uh, woman. You know, something in common between two. You know what that is? There's something in common between two. Come on, what is that? Lady, uh, a, a woman came to the well because she was thirsty. She had no water to, to use at home. Usually the time that they throw water is early, either early in the morning or late in the afternoon. Because during the day it was a so hot like a Texas. <laughs> so but she decided to come to the well in the heat of the day. Why? Why is that? Early in the morning, there's a lady is throwing water and talking about her. Okay. In the evening, same thing. So she just want to go there when no one's around. Okay. She was the top of the town. You know, if you have a lady in your in the neighborhood, you know, uh, you know, fooling around with a woman, you know, and dealing with the drugs. Okay. Who's gonna be? Who's gonna be? Uh, who's gonna have an eye on that? Police, you know, prostitution or drugs on your uh, in, in your neighborhood. You better get out there. You don't want to stay there. You know. Uh, anyhow, she was the top of the town, so she decided to come to the well in the heat of the day, no one was around, and Jesus traveled. What? Jesus traveled. Far over 30 miles, one foot, you know, leaving around 6 o'clock in the morning and got there at noon. Okay? So he was what? Thirsty. So they came together to a place where they will they may have have a feeling of a quenching, right? Of their thirst, right? They were there to quench their thirst. Okay? So thirst was a common thing they had in mind. You know, uh, she was, you know what though? She was not physically thirst, thirsty, but spiritually thirsty. There was a time that Jesus said she, he was he was a thirsty. Do you know when that was? When did see that Jesus said, I am thirsty? What was that? That's right. On the cross. That's a physical thirst. Okay? Okay. Jesus approaching her not to take care of her physical thirst, but to take care of her spiritual thirst. And we'll see how, you know, uh, how it's going to develop. Okay, meeting with a, with a Samaritan one at the well, okay? First, one to four, I'm going to give you kind of, you know, outline of the, of the chapter. Four to one is a reason of the journey, okay? The Bible says that I must go. That's what Jesus said, okay? So the reason was... Even 30 miles away, Jesus knew that there was a woman coming to the well every noontime to draw water, and she was thirsty, spiritually. And I'm going to go over there, what? And, and, and resolve a problem. Amen. Okay? You know what? Taking what? Taking his own likeness. You know, he might be killed on the way there as a Jewish man traveling Samaritan territory. Okay? And then. 5 to 26, conversation between Jesus and the woman. It's a long conversation, very you know, important conversation we want to have you know, sometimes in our lives. Okay? Then 27 to 42 is the outcome of the direct encounter. She didn't stay there when she found out that Jesus was a Messiah who resolved her you know, spiritual problem. Well, what did she do? She left the bucket there, went to the town, and brought people. Those people that she brought, what kind of people was that? But they're the ones who are pointing fingers at her. You know, spreading rumors about. You understand what I'm saying? But she brought them. We're going to talk about that. All right. Let's put the scripture up here. On to the facts. Okay. On to the facts. Okay. We're going to read again. And I'm going to, I want you to be in tune with God. And see what kind of message he's trying to deliver to you. With this scriptures. Are you ready? This is a very sacred moment. Okay? This is a time you're going to be in tune with the God's word and see if 
there is any message coming from you through the word. Okay? Got that? Okay. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. The disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask of a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritan. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is it that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you a living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket. The well is deep. Where do we get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well? And when the sun and the flock drank from it, Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Yes. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. Amen. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. Amen. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water. Amen. I wish I would that this is uh, your deepest desire. Amen. Give me this water so that I may not ever be thirsty or have to come coming out here to grow water. Okay. Now share with me what are the message that God is trying to impress upon you? Okay. God, I have a willing heart. What else? Okay. Submit. 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 Okay. Submit. Submit yourself. Willing heart. Okay, what else? <clears throat> All right, I like that. He knows more than we know ourselves. See, she came here to quench her physical thirst, but deep inside, Jesus is pointing out that no, that's not the problem here. The problem is your spiritual thirst. Okay, go ahead. To recognize the only thing that can quench your thirst and not use this strategy. Okay, elaborate a little bit more. For example, mm -hmm. in general, when people feel that they're not well, oh, I just don't feel fulfilled, they turn, to, in general, the world will turn to alcohol or other things. Sometimes in the church, we turn to TV or, or movies or other distractions, and we still end up thirsty at the end, like drinking salt water. You can drink all day and you'll still be thirsty yeah, okay. until you come to the river. Okay. Yeah. What are the messages I get from this scripture? You know, to me, you know, it says that if she knew the gift of God, mm -hmm. uh, if we know that God has only one gift which He has given to us, and that is Jesus Christ, it will, it will resolve all things. Okay. Yeah. The gift of God. Surprised, we are looking at that woman, and yet she did not know who she was. <coughs> I think that um, I think it's a very encouraging thing because it doesn't matter how low you are, yeah. how horrible things you are going through, yeah. maybe unwilling or willing. <coughs> Jesus still has his eye on you. Right? Yeah. You can go. You can go
They might be doing yeah. because Jesus went there just to point the woman to Him yeah. that I am the one that can meet your thirst. Amen. And Amen. even though the woman, uh, after he realized that, he went back to the enemy. You know, sometimes we say this is our enemy, that is our enemy. Yeah. But people are not really our enemy. But this woman proved that she had the Lord immediately. She had the touch of Jesus mm -hmm. and went back and brought those people to yeah. Jesus. You know, sometimes I mention, what if a disciple had gone to the town of Bible and were there? How do you think that they would have responded? Jesus is meeting a Samaritan woman. Look how they responded when they got back. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> wow. But it doesn't matter to Jesus, right? All right, guys. Good. Thank you for sharing those thoughts. You know, I'm blessed, you know, hearing from you. Conversation between the Lord and the woman, okay? And what would really trigger their conversation? What was the, what was the main topic about their conversation? Water, water that's right. Water, that's so correct. Huh? Yeah, water, right? Water was the issue. Okay? And she went there to draw water because she was thirsty. And, and the, the water that she wanted to draw from is what? As he arrived at the wall, what, what was here, verse 6 said, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by the journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon, okay, noon time. Okay, and the woman approached, right? And, and Jacob's well, this is the Jacob's well right here, you know, uh, still existing, okay? Jacob's well is located 76 meters, 246 feet from the Tel Balata in the eastern part of the city of Annapolis. The well had narrow opening and just wide enough to allow the body of a man to pass through with the arm lifted up. Okay, this narrow neck, which is about four foot long, <coughs> opens into well itself, which is a, a cylindrically shape. It's like this, okay? And, 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 and opens about seven feet and six inches in diameter. The well and the upper part of the well are built of masonry, and the well appears to have been sunk through the mixture of the alluvial soil and the lime a stone of uh, fragments, till a compact bed of the mountain limestone was reached, having horizontal strata which could be easily worked. Then the interior of the wall press, uh, interior wall press presents the appearance of having been lined through with a rough mason. You know, in those days, in, 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 in Palestine, it's like us, dry weather. Okay. There's no rain in the summertime from early March until late October. There's no water whatsoever. Rain comes in the, in the, in the winter time, like here, okay, in October all the way to you know uh, February. And when the water is plenty, they don't have to you know go to well to uh, you know to draw water. But summertime, they need a water. So what they did was they dig a hole, big hole, okay, like this one, big hole. Then uh, during the winter time, what happens? Water coming from the ground, 
will come to the well and they leave them there. It's like a reservoir. Yeah. Reservoir, okay? And we, you know, uh, save water from rain, right? And in one place, and we use them uh, during, the, during the hot season, okay? That's a Jacob's well. Because they were not just, uh, you know, uh, they, the water is not there for themselves, but water is very essential for what? The livestock they carried around, okay? So there are two types of well at the time. The first one is well, okay, the one that I just told you. A large reservoir to collect water during the rainy season. Because the Jacob's well, Jacob's well is, is this one right here. It's a well. It's, okay, the other one is oasis. We call it dead water. The water is not coming from anywhere else. It's just water they collected during the summertime, okay? To, uh, I mean, the wintertime to, to spend them during the summertime, okay? The other one is a spring. We call it oasis where the water springs up from the ground regardless of the rainy season. So what kind of well was the Jacob's well? The spring. spring. Not a spring, it was well. Okay, there's no water coming from the underground. They collect the water from rain, okay, use them during the summertime. So what kind of water was that? Uh, in a spring water we call living water, okay? So she came to a well, Jacob's well is what? The well where the woman wanted to draw water from? What, 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 what type of water is that? So, and Jesus promised her what? A living water. And she said, Lord, you know what? Please, give me, you know, the well is deep. Yeah, and there's no bucket. Okay, and, and, and uh, once water is used up, there's no more. You know, I can't go, I cannot come out here to draw water anymore. So why don't you come to my place and dig an oasis? That kind of uh, you know, question he, she was asking. That kind of question she was asking. And Jesus was washing water from her, right? And, and what is it? A Samaritan one came to draw water and Jesus said to her, what? Give me a drink. Water is plenty there at the time, and, and he was a thirsty. And, and how did she answer his question? The water. How did she say? I'll come to you being a Jew. What, what, did, what, did she, what did she say? Right here, verse 9. It says, The Samaritan woman said to him, How is that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me? A woman of what? Samaritan. Jew do not share common things with the Samaritan. So she what? What did she do? What's she doing? How do you dare ask me to give you one? You are what? Jew. And I'm Samaritan. And you are man? And I'm woman. Full of she refused to have a conversation with the Jew. Don't talk to me like this. You know, when I was visiting Dubai one time and I got, you know, uh, I supposed to be picked up by a pastor who works there, and he wasn't found. I was there by myself. And I have a day to spend. Okay? And I checked around and found out that spend a one night in Hilton Hotel in Dubai it will cost me $450. And, and I had no place to go. And he wasn't, he, he wasn't even there. So you know what I decided? I decided to rent a car. You know, American product car. <laughs> you know, if you go to Dubai, you know, it's really rare to see American car. You know, most of my BMW, Mercedes, Bentley's, and you know, Rolls Royce, and the American cars are only used for the rental car. So I got a rental, small, tiny, in a Ford rental car, and drove off to see the town. I got lost. <laughs> it's a huge city. There's nothing out there. You know, it's, it's a barren land, it's just a building. And when I was in the highway, you know, I was the only American, you know, uh, man driving an American car. This is gone. Anyhow, and this one. Okay, good. It's on now. <laughs> Anyhow, I was the only American driving in America, and in a Dell driving in you know, a 90 or 100 miles an hour, and I was way behind. Somehow I got lost. There was no GPS at the time, so I was lost, and and I stopped one place. I came off the highway and stopped one place, and I saw a woman passing by. 
roll the window down and start yell, hey, Mrs. Hello. She looked at me, you know what she did? <laughs> That's what she was doing. You know what? If she were found by one of his relatives yes. talking with a stranger, especially men, she would be stoned to death. Yes. She covered her face. I don't see nothing but her eyes with a black dress and the temperature outside was 130 degrees. She was walking down the street. And I got lost. I tried to open the window and talk with the covers and have a conversation with her. You know, even still, you know, even now yes. in, in the Middle East, people that, you know, women are acting like that. What about in the time of Jesus? A Samaritan woman, there's no man around, just a man and woman, different race, talking to each other. What would you do if you wanna if you if you were her? Don't ever talk to me like that. I have no business whatsoever with you. I'm already known as a woman of what? Immorality. Everybody knows me. Everybody knows that I'm infatuated with a man. So I don't wanna have, I don't wanna build up, you know, a more bad reputation. You know? So looking at her, woman of full uh, woman of, a woman full of what? Prejudice. What kind of prejudice did she have? Ethnic prejudice, right? To, you know, a, 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 a God that says uh, to eat bread with the Samaritan at the time is like what? Eating more. You know, and what about national prejudice? Here, how is that you, a Jew, as a woman of what? Samaritan. You and I, different race. We don't talk. You know, <laughs> there's an ethnic prejudice, I mean, national prejudice there. And, and then there's a gender prejudice. What did she say? A Jewish man asking a Samaritan woman? Impossible. Prejudice again. Okay, and then social prejudice. You know, it says, an uh, austere rabbi is a prohibited to have a conversation even with his own daughter and his wife in a public place. Wow, presence. You know what? Sometimes I feel like, you know, sometimes coming to church, you need to have a conversation with the Jesus. You know what, though? You have a preconceived ideas in your mind, one or the other, not able to talk with him. So my question is this. What prejudice are there that you may not be able to have an open conversation with the Jesus? Oh, Jesus will not even. My sin is too great. I'm not good enough. You know? I can't be better if I talk with Jesus. Is that kind of prejudice you have? My life is so messed up. I'm doing something that doesn't please God, so I cannot talk with Him. Is that prejudice? Yeah, what prejudice do you have? I did a terrible thing in my life. God never gonna forgive me. No open communication. What prejudice do you, prejudice do you have? <clears throat> they may not be able to help you to have open communication with the Jesus. But at this moment, that doesn't matter. That's not a story that happened long ago, it's still happening. Yes. You know, a woman sick of man, Correct? Change his wife, her husband five times. And, and the husband, she was about to throw him away. You know, Jesus said to her, Go and call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you. Because you had had what? Five husbands before, and the one you have now is not yours. What you have said is true. You know? One thing good about her is she's honest. <laughs> you know? My question is this. What does this, what does Jesus say about your spiritual condition today? That no one knows. I cannot tell who you are spiritually. You know, uh, uh, spiritually. I can tell you. But you know, Jesus. What does it say about your spirituality today? Jesus is going out. The sin that she was committing right there. She, you know, he didn't go around. 
you know, using, you know, non-dissensive, you know, language to point out her, her sin. She was right there pointing her sin right directly. And he's about to do that to you. But you need to know your spirituality first, the level of spirituality at this time. Otherwise, he could not avoid you. What does Jesus say about your spiritual condition today? And I'm going to throw some questions. You need to answer yourself. You don't have to answer to me. You know, the woman, sick of man, she was, she was at the lower, lowest part of her life. And she was in the valley. I'm sure that she was about to, you know, people talking about her, you know, just, do you know how hard it is? You know, people said there's, you know, divorce. Is there any good divorce? No. Even if you, you settle your divorce well, that's not good divorce. She gone through five times a day. Okay, I'm sure that every single man, uh, man in the town have had an interest in her. Oh, she didn't fool with the man. Maybe on the next one. You know? She was a sick and tired of man. She was a sick and tired of her life. People talking about her, her life in the lowest point. You know, she, she might maybe she might have considered committing suicide. Who knows? That was a condition she was in, and Jesus was pointing at that. Hey, this is where you are now. Okay, what about you? What did Jesus say about your spirituality, a spiritual condition at this time? Where do you think you are now? Spiritual. Unless you realize where you are, that Jesus cannot help you. The reason Jesus was about to help her to get out of her misery is because she realized where she was. And she wanted to get out of it. Okay. You know, alcoholics. Alcoholic Anonymous. Have you been there? And I've been there a couple times. Not because I drank. <laughs> because uh, when I was working for Dallas International, they had a, you know, the church we rented from, they have a class going on every, you know, Wednesday night. So I went there to see what's going on. The first thing they, they will try to help them to understand is what? Understand, to say is what? I am what? Simple as that. They have to admit that. They have to verbally, you know, uh, uh, in a written form, they have to admit that they are alcoholic. Otherwise, they can't help them. Same with the Jesus. He cannot help you unless you admit that you are sinful. More miserable than the woman that we are just studying. Okay, Jesus knowing her real need. You know, the, the quenching her physical thirst is not a problem, right? What was a problem? A spiritual problem, right? Yes. So here, this is what Jesus said. I say, I answer, she, Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God, this is what she needed, right? Yes. Which is what? Jesus himself, right? Messiah. Who it is that, that is a saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you a living water. Amen. Amen. She's not just a, a dead water, she needed what? Yes. Living water. Yes. Given by the gift of God, Jesus, right? That's what she needed, right? Amen. And Jesus pointed out, <laughs> Jesus not only uh, present the condition, uh, I mean, uh, her spiritual condition, but also he is giving him a, giving a solution as well. This is your problem. Now here's the solution. Amen. Are you willing to do it? Okay. My question is this. What does it say that is your true need today? You know, people come to church for various reasons. And you know, I get calls, you know, every Sabbath. And I go to answer machine. There's a, you know, there's a people calling a pastor. You know, are you the pastor of the church? Yes. Hey, I need this and that. I need to have my rent paid. I need to have my electricity paid. You know. Call the covenant to tell their physical need. But as I continue to talk with them, what do I find? I just need more than just a you know bill paid. What does this Jesus say that is your true need today? He knows. One thing she hated doing, what was that? What was one thing that she hated doing? She said this, I, I may never be thirst or have to, come to, have to keep coming here to draw water. Yes. You know, uh, drawing water in the heat of the day, she hated it. But she had, you know, even if she hated it, she had to do it. Right? My question is this. 
What is the one thing you hate doing, but still? What is it? You know, I met a gentleman uh, yesterday. Yes, yesterday, and talking with him, and he went to a mock, you know, mock box in a uh, revelation seminar and all that. Knows all kind of all the end time stuff, you know. You know what, Pastor? I know that the church is Sabbath. I'm convicted by it. But I can't come to church. Why is that? I gotta watch college football. <laughs> she, I hate, I, I love, you know, college football. I like to watch, but I hate watching it because of Sabbath. But I still what? Doing it. <laughs> Like all of us. What about you guys? Record it. <laughs> I said, I said, DVR is the answer. <laughs> you know what he said? No, it's not like a new life. You don't have to go to Oklahoma. Oh, I think he's, he's running for uh, uh, a state of uh, an Oklahoma State you know, University. Yes. He traveled over there with his friends. Even if he knows. You know, about Sabbath. You know what? I told him, hey, if a knowledge that you have going through all, you know, he's going to come to our meetings again. I, I invite him. He said he want to come. So if you see him, you know, don't say anything. this. <laughs> don't embarrass him. And, and I told him, hey, you acquired so much knowledge about any time. Yes. You know, it's good. Okay? It's all up here. Yes. But the knowledge you have up here doesn't come down and touch your heart. <coughs> You're never going to change. Yes. Hebrew. His heart is not. You know, we know so much. You know, some of you guys grew from in you know, a childhood as Adventists, right? We knew, we know so much. But what if the knowledge that you 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 be collecting is a skin up there, never come down and touch your heart? You're never gonna be changed. Never change. What is the one thing you hate though, but still do? What is it? You know what though? You know what, though? This is a thought that, they, you know, I woke up 2 o'clock this morning trying to you know, finish up my sermon. God gave me a thought. You know what? It's one thing that you hate doing but still do, that's what Jesus is going to challenge you. Yes. Yes. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. One thing you hate doing but still does, but still do, that's the exact one that Satan and Jesus will challenge. Yes. That's right. So what are you gonna do about that? We're not perfect. Yes. We have one thing that, that, that we do and hate doing, but still do. Yeah, that's what Jesus is gonna challenge. You know, how did Jesus approach her even if she refused to have a conversation with her? You know what? Jesus showed interest in a physical need first. Right? Yes. And the change of attitude. Oh, I could give you living water. Oh, is that right? You know, living water is not Jesus giving you living water. And living water, he, 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 she was referring to what? It's a spring water coming. Yeah. Oh, you can come to my house and dig a hole yeah. and make an oasis? Please. <laughs> and change your attitude. That's got it. And just, no. <laughs> you know, what does it take to change your attitude when he's approaching to touch you. Okay. You know, those questions, and I spent so much time with them to come up with, I want you to consider. You don't have to answer to me. You don't have to answer to your friends. You need to answer to God. What does it take to change your attitude when He's approaching to touch you? He's approaching this morning, every single one of you, to touch you. Okay. How to change your attitude? It's a matter of attitude, you know. She wants to know how to get a little bucket. Right? The woman says, Sir, you have no bucket. The well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our answer to Jacob, who gave this well with his sons and his flock drunk from it? She wants to know. Water Jesus gets. That's not waste his water. Yes. In oasis water, sooner or later, it will dry up as well. Yes. 
You know, even if the water coming from the underground, you know what? If you keep using it or use more than what you get, you know, from the uh, from from spring, you know what? It's gonna dry up, right? The water she was talking, he was not, he was talking about is not the water that will dry up. It's the water that give her what? What does the Bible say? Everlasting life. This is what she said. Jesus said to her, everyone who drink of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. Amen. The water that I'll give will become in them what? A spring of a water gushing to eternal life. That's what she needed. Nothing else. Living water. Woman asked of the water of the spring right here in you know, verse 15. What did she say? The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water. I hope that this is your desire. Yes, yes. Lord, today, no matter what kind of thirst in your life that hope to, 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 to bring you down, okay? One thing you need to ask of him is what? To give me what? To give me this water. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to tell you a story. You know, this is a beautiful, this is a story that we need to think about. All right. Uh, Bert Hunter, a newspaper reporter, a photographer in the Long Beach, California, found himself in a strange mission on foggy morning. He was a scale to interview and take pictures of a woman, a woman snake charmer. Like this, right here. Okay, but Bert visited a woman's home. He was kind of surprised to find out that she lived in a very nice upper class neighborhood. Those you know, snake farmers, you know, snake handlers, they live in a, such a in a dinky place. Okay, and the woman herself didn't look someone who played with the snakes. Bert could not help me mentioning that fact to her. I don't understand why a wealthy, attractive woman such as yourself is engaged in this kind of business, he said. It seems awful, awfully dangerous to me. You don't have to do this. The woman smiled and said, oh, I don't, I don't do it because I have to. It's a fascinating hobby. I really like the element of danger and love. Someday soon I plan to give it up and spend more time with my flowers. But I can't quit. I couldn't quit this anytime I want to. I want you to remember that. What? I can quit this anytime I want to. Amen. While Bert set up his equipment, the woman brought a basket containing cobras. She confidently left some of the deadly snakes as he snapped pictures of a handling them. After replacing the snake in the basket, she cautioned. Be especially quiet now. Don't make any quick move. I'm going to take out my newest snake. It, is, it isn't completely used to me yet. The woman left out the new snake out of the basket. Then suddenly, stiffened. And something's wrong. She whispered to the photographer. I'm going to, I'm going to have to put him back. She opened the basket slowly and began to lower the snake into it. With a lightning fast zap, the cobra buried the fangs into her, her, her wrist. The woman forced the snake into the basket and, and, and clutched her arms. She spoke calmly to Bert, go quickly to my medicine chest and, and bring the snake serum. Hurry! Trembling, Bert ran into the restroom and returned with a precious life. The woman instructed him to take out this, a syringe and fit the needle on it. Then the, she told him how to withdraw the serum. Bert struggled with unfamiliar tests, his hands shaking, shaking, shaking bad. He braces his arm against the table as he tried to uh, try uh, desperately to get the needle into the vial. Suddenly he grabbed and a, a gasped. His clumsy fingers had crushed the tiny bottle, the syrup, now useless. 
dripping through his fingers and onto the floor. Tell me, he urged, what, what can I get, another? how can I get, another? where can I get another? In a quiet voice, she responded, that was my last one. The woman agonized, uh, the, the, the woman, a woman's agony ended when she died a few hours later. Birds, however, continued to uh, continue for the rest of his life. He often recalled what the woman had said that day. What did, what did, what did she say? I can quit this. Any time I want. You know what? You can present your case before Jesus any time you want to, but you're still holding on to it. What if, you know, uh, Bill, you know, last Sabbath, you know, after, after the service was Bill, you know, made a very good you know, uh, point uh, uh, you know, to me. Pastor, Jesus came to that woman, risking his own life. Early in the journey, uh, early in the morning to get there at noon, he was almost exhausted. He spent six or seven hours working over there. Okay, without stop. What if she refused? You know, Jesus came from heaven to come to earth to die for each and every one of us, right? What if you refuse? You know what? Whatever you do, that is not in accordance with God's will. You can quit any time if you want to. Correct? Yeah. This is the time. This is the time. You need to quit whatever you do. That is not in accordance with God's will. Present it what? Present it before Jesus. You will take care of that, right? Okay. My time's up. So I'm going to give you a question again. Oh, before I go, listen. Consider the world as a church. Jesus, that, that, that's what the Jesus was, right? And she was approaching, right? Consider the well as a church. Okay? What do you come to the well for? Spiritual. Spiritual? Spiritual water. Okay, spiritual water, okay? We come to church for various reasons, right? So what is it to you that you come to the well this morning? You know, and another question is, what do you intend to draw from the well? <coughs> Jesus is willing to give anything that you want. What is it? Okay, my question is this. Jesus, I've come expecting to get something. How are you touching my desire today? I want you to ask that question to Jesus. Okay? Another one is, Jesus... What are the real needs I ought to present to you today that I've been putting off so long? Let him point it out for you. Like Jesus pointed out her problem, her solution before, right? What about this? Jesus, what are the hindrances I cherish that I cannot be honest with you? That's those questions. Jesus, sometimes I feel like a woman at the well, hating her lifestyle, but you approach to help her to meet her true need. What do you love about me today? What worth and value do you see? The last one is, Jesus, how happy, how happy would you be if I returned home with my need met according to you? Those questions I want you to think about and answer, you know, and ask Jesus, and He will give you answer. Okay, let's see now. Let's see. Four ninety-three. Let's all stand. Would you, Mike? Would you put those questions on the screen on my computer? What we are seeing. Okay, well, I, want you, I want you to see those questions, okay? And, and, and you know, think about it over and over again, okay? Okay, let's see.
spiritually dry, you are there to fill that one up. As we leave from this place, we are joyous. We are jumping up and down because we are filled. Lord, fill us as we leave from this place and share what you feel with, with others. Lord, this is a, such a great Sabbath. We come and find rest and joy in you. As we leave from this place, may your spirit go with us and live a life that is already filled. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.